Thank you for joining us today. Won't you join us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I, and I'm an associate minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church, located in Chicago, Illinois, where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I may be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Our lesson for today is entitled, God Picked You, and it's taken from Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 14, and the main thought of the memory verse is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, which reads thusly, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with our spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the church at Ephesus, written from a Roman prison, this letter doesn't address an issue the church was having, but is a general letter reminding the people of the nature of the gospel and instructions in Christian living. This letter was to be read at Ephesus, then circulated to the various other cities in the region. Paul identifies himself as an apostle or an official messenger who conveys messages from author authoritative figures. Verse one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, which are Ephesus and to the faithful of Jesus Christ. And what great authority could you be delivering messages from than Jesus when he was called by Jesus on the Damascus road to stop persecuting disciples and start making them. All had, all has taken place according to God's will. Paul was converted when he was supposed to be converted. And Paul identifies who he is addressing. He said, to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. And yes, he addresses the believers and the faithful in Jesus, Jews or Gentiles, it didn't matter. And Paul now addresses the audience with the greetings that expresses the expectation of God's blessing. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, verse two. And, and he announces also that it not only comes from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, making them equal, which went against everything the Jews, the Jewish Christians believe. They didn't believe First of all, you know, they didn't believe Christ was who Christ was. So to say both of them, to compare them as being equal was blasphemy to the Jewish Christians. Verse three is the beginning of the longest sentence in the Bible. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, when I say the longest one, because actually this verse doesn't end, it's broken up for clarity part on our part in reading the Bible, but it doesn't really end until the 14th verse of this chapter. That That's one sentence, even though it's, various verses and 
It's over 200 words between verse 3 and verse 14. Paul identifies God as himself and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, again, indicating the unity in God and Jesus Christ. And also that we have been blessed already with all the spiritual blessings in heaven, heavenly places, God's throne room in Christ. Before God created the foundation of the world, his plan was that all men were made holy and without blame because we were born without sin. Because of sin, God was not willing to condemn all men. So because of this, Jesus became the plan. Verse four, according as he has chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Even before creation, God's choice predestinated for all people was to become his people. Israel he chose and the Gentiles would, who would make up most of those at Ephesus could be adopted into God's family God chose all people by his grace. We must choose him through our faith. This is God's act of loving mercy coming from the good pleasures of his will. Verse five, having predestined us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Because of the grace of God and through Jesus Christ, his beloved son, we are not full heir. We are now full heirs and accepted as full members of the family of God with all rights and privileges. Verse six, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. The beloved is Jesus Christ. And, and we, have, we have been slaves to sin. And we have to be repurchased, redeemed for our freedom and let go of our worldly choices, our sin, to follow the will of God and receive the riches of his abounding grace. Verse seven and eight, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. God having all wisdom to deal with us wayward, with his wayward children, us, has revealed to us his will, which before was a mystery. And unless he had revealed it to us, we could, we would not have been able to figure it out because we don't think correctly like God. Prudence, verse eight and nine, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. Though God's plan is being fulfilled each and every day in the fullness of time, when Jesus Christ returns, all things, people, animals, everything will be reunified as originally created and planned by God. We will all live together in unity according to God's will. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Because of our adoption by God, we also obtain our inheritance as one of God's children, as he will and all things work together to achieve his purpose. Of verse 11 and 12, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him 
who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Because we heard the gospel and accepted and believed in it, we when we do that, we immediately receive part of our inheritance and the blessings from God by being filled by the Holy Spirit, which is a promise from God. Verse 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of God, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The promise of the Holy Spirit was a down payment, or as it says, the word in verse 14 say, earnest on our inheritance with the full inheritance being received upon Christ's return. But while on earth, as part of the family of God, we enjoy his power and his presence every day. And as we come to the end of this lesson, God tells us in his word that he desired that not one soul should, would be lost to sin for all eternity. God picked all of us, you, me, and everybody else to, be, to become part of his family through his grace and each of us must choose him by our faith to receive this adoption and the inheritance he has for us. And on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Kevin Wilkes and the Greater Queen Missionary Baptist Church family, we again thank you for being a part of our Sunday school lesson. Let us pray. God bless and God keep us all. Amen, and thank God. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday School lesson has made you want to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us for our Sunday School at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 1130. We look forward to seeing you there. Until then, tell somebody you love them.